he got eaten by Oh, their cam is literally like frozen? <laughs> That's random. I probably should have lost that <laughs> Vegito is a good matchup versus 21. I think it's pretty even, honestly. Um, especially now that 5S goes through, uh, 5S goes through two, two success. So this, uh, before we get started, uh, this is going to be the first time I upload, uh, I upload an analysis session to YouTube, so say hello to the YouTubers out there. Uh, for those of you who don't watch my streams and you only watch YouTube, uh, only watch YouTube videos, I do analysis every week. Uh, it's pretty in-depth, and you would be surprised, even though I'm not a top player, uh, the stuff that I catch when I play this game. So, I would take the opportunity to try to learn something for yourself as well. Uh, that's really kind of the point of these sessions. Of course, the people that submit it are subs, and they're looking for critiques on their gameplay, but there's a lot that can be gleaned and a lot that can be learned if you just pay attention. Some of the stuff that I'm going to comment on probably applies to some of your gameplay as well, so just do your best to try to latch onto anything that you possibly can. And that's not meant to sound condescending, but it, you, you'd be amazed how easy, it, how much easier it is to digest information when you're actually actively attempting to do so, right? If you're watching it in passing and you're just not paying attention, it's easy to miss things and easy for things to, you know, just kind of go in one ear and out the other. But if you're actually paying attention, uh, there's a lot that can that can get done here. So. Leo is your brother, so you'd like for the analysis to be for him. Okay, cool. So he's up against Doza. All right, interesting. Your, guy, your brother plays a quite an interesting team. It's the very KSEC S. Uh, get this. Okay. Nice, nice. And we're back to Sanctuary in the Glades today as well. Uh, which is a classic analysis song for us. Let me make sure I have this selected so I can, uh... Work? Okay, cool, cool. Make sure I can go forward and backwards at will. Okay, a little bit of an overextension here, so... Um, you get the first hit with Cooler, which is fine. So the problem is that the dive kick is not uh, a long SKD. <clears throat> it's like a, essentially a pseudo knockdown. Um, it's going to knock your opponent down, but they also get to choose their tech options immediately. So you want to be very careful about what's called an overextension. So here you dive kick and then you do falling JM to, I believe, catch uh, a tech option from your opponent, which is fine. And you land in 5M hoping to cover. But the JM is actually too low here, so as you can see, when he texts, um, he actually texts too high for this JM to make contact, meaning that you kind of it doesn't your your JM actually doesn't even come out. There's no hitbox here because you're too low to the ground. So um, I'm sure it is possible, but you need to press the button earlier, uh, both to make sure that it actually comes out and to make sure that you're making contact with his toes here, because the goal is for him to block the JM and then be jailed to the ground. That's what you went for here, but you ended up missing. Uh, and he also, you know, has an air option afterwards, so he's able to up tech and then back dash, which is a very, very common tech option. Um, up tech back dash is one of the more common ones nowadays, so it's something that you definitely want to lab against uh, because people are going to try to steal their turns back by doing stuff like this all the time. Uh, pretty much, if you give if you give your opponent a reason to not block for any given reason, they will take it. So you want to make sure you're forcing them, you're forcing the issues. So empty load there. So from here, uh, it's pretty it's pretty difficult to realize. Also, I hate the fact that their overlay like kind of covers the health bars here. Like, I don't know whose decision that was. Shit is fucking annoying. But okay, um, what I was gonna say is you have to be able to recognize the health situation here. So <clears throat> you get hit, right? He puts you back in the corner. You are now in two touch range. Now you might not think that you're in two touch range, but you are. Uh, <clears throat> Pretty much anytime you're you're below like anytime you're below like 90-ish, 85-ish percent, uh, pretty easy to touch for characters that build like even decent amounts of meter. Uh, if Bluku falls in that category of building building a pretty decent amount of meter, not on the level of like Team Gohan or like 17, but definitely like relevant. Uh, but more so, he does a ton of damage, right? So when he hits you, um, 
first of all you eat the assist right you eat the bardock assist you thankfully do not get comboed afterwards if you did get comboed afterwards then you actually would have lived this combo which is unfortunate but since you got hit by the assist and then you are no longer in the combo right the next hit that it gets you is going to be a fresh l starter which is essentially uh a damage scaling reset <clears throat> so he block strings you he goes for an id he fakes the high and goes low now the problem with this situation is at this point you have to assess how important is Kohler to your team now i don't i, I haven't watched you play for very long uh so i don't know how much stock you put into your Kohler, but <clears throat> this is the this is a situation where burning level one spark is very applicable right you're saving your point character from getting too touched you also get immediate pressure because you have two assists available so you could sparking empty vanish plus assist deal into the ground with another assist potentially go for 50 50 with left right which would be uh you know what cooler wants to go for in this situation and and it's all about it's all about perspective right it's all about recognizing that even though you're at 80 percent you know 85 percent health your your character's life is still in danger it's not hard to do big damage in this game especially now they made it way easier overall so you want to be very very careful about choosing to take the mix up here now things like this are definitely blockable like this empty this empty low is definitely blockable 100 percent it just takes practice like this is something that can easily be grinded out with a defense bot um and mostly uh, you just want to be fuzzy guarding you, you fuzzy guard high to low because any overhead in this situation is going to come faster than a low but however you also have to watch out because blue goku of course has a 17 frame command grab but he can't do it while you're in block stun so <clears throat> if he does like something assisted right obviously he has to wait x amount of frames before his command grab comes out and actually make contact that is something that you want to keep in mind Mendoza is uh very strong so he's not he's not going to drop the easy stuff i don't think keeps it real simple Okay, this is his call is not bad. I that you didn't bite. Nice, he blocked a low. Okay, more pressure. Yeah, another empty low. So you're having some trouble. Having some trouble with, with fake high go low. Okay. It is minus five. Yeah, okay, I want to be... Okay, 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 okay. So, uh, this is a situation where you're showing too much respect. Uh, and what I mean by that is... <clears throat> You want to take a look at the resources in the situation and kind of make your decision based on this so first of all even though he does it meaty right so the problem with doing stuff meaty like spin is that only the last uh only the last hit of spin determines the block stun situation meaning that no matter how meaty he does it if the last hit is not the one that actually meaties you then the frame advantage is still the same, i.e. minus five, because it is grounded spin. If he did air spin, it could be as low as minus two, but he did not do that here. He, all he did was meet you with spin, hoping to catch you overhead. This is just minus five, meaning that you have an opportunity to take your turn back here in some way or escape, right? You want to just make one of those two decisions and you want to make the decision quickly because if you don't make the decision quickly, then your opponent is able to steal turns more effectively. And that's exactly what happens here. He goes for minus five spin. You choose to not press anything. So he does backdash Lariat, right? And this is also minus five. You choose to not take your turn again. He does backdash into auto combo. He whiffs in your face. You still do not take your turn. Do you see the problem here? He gave you three opportunities back to back to take your turn back. You never did. Or to escape, right? You can super jump out of the corner. It's much easier to moon jump out of the corner as well. Because now you can do it by holding S while you're in block stun. And then dash jumping out of the corner to just completely disengage. But you chose to stand there, right? For three whole situations. Three opportunities you had to escape or take a turn. You did not. So this is this is very, very important for the game of Dragon Ball Fighters Because things happen very quickly, right? It's very easy for your opponent to take another turn if you're kind of asleep at the wheel. You have to be ready. You have to be alert. And when those opportunities manifest themselves, you need to get the fuck out. This is not where you want to be, of course. Corner, right? You're in the corner against Bardock. Assists are also cooling down, right? If you tip, look, pay attention to the cooldowns, you need to make a decision and you need to make a decision quickly, right? This, this is important. So try not to let things like this happen. And sometimes like you have to accept that sometimes you're going to be wrong right and 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 that that's something that that a lot of people have trouble with whenever they when they actually get analysis it's the idea that you know i i am saying that you need to make a decision 
uh, and the speed of that decision is going to make things a lot easier for you. However, sometimes even if you make the decision quickly, it's just the wrong decision. Wrong, quote unquote. What I mean by wrong decision is sometimes your opponent just chooses the perfect option to deal with what you did, right? No matter how good or thought out the situation was, there's always the chance that your opponent is looking for exactly what you do, right? Just on a hard read. So don't get caught up in that. Sometimes you're going to try to escape here and you're going to get hit on the way out because they like air to air you or like try to lock you down. That's fine. What's more important is that when these gaps show up, you take them, right? That's more important than, you know, I'm afraid of being wrong. If you're afraid of being wrong in, in fighting games in general, you'll never you'll never take initiative. And fighting games are all about initiative. So you can't you can't let him uh, just dog you like that. Hey, you reflected me, but he had an assist. So yeah, another empty low. So so all of all three of the solid hits that Doza has gotten on you so far have been fake high go low. And he, go, he keeps going for it. So so Doza is recognizing that you're having trouble blocking it. So now he's doing it every time, right? And so you prove to him that you can block it. And once again, so this is the situation where you, you kind of got away. You kind of got away with murder, right? He drops his combo. You get you get which means you get another chance for Janemba to live because he would have died from that combo. <clears throat> There's not really a reason for you to hold sparking here. When you see the assist come out, free sparking once again. Sparking, empty vanish, drag him to the ground, force him to take a mix. What's usually going to happen in this situation is you will spark and you will get your offense started. If they do not sparking back, they just get 50 50 right? Into a huge amount of meter gain because you're playing Janemba. If they do spark, right, then you get a resource for free. Right? And that will happen a lot. You will level one spark, you will try to lock your opponent down. And even though they're at full health, because like Dosa's character is at full health, they will sparking back because they recognize the threat that sparking is like sparking is an insane tool uh and people don't want to deal with with the crazy offense that it gives you so they will likely spark back even if they're at full health so this is very important getting that resource out but it's important to realize that even if he does spark back yours is going to last longer because you're sparking level two now that not to say that i'm saying keep your sparking for level two every time honestly the the strongest sparking in the game is level one spark um <clears throat> keeping a three-person team is the most important part of the game uh, health management wise right so make decisions that keep your team together right no matter what that may be and once you when you play more and you get more experience you will understand the situations that you're actually in danger right because i think that you're having a little bit of trouble with threat assessment like these situations that he's putting you on block stun and going for just like a normal you know vanilla mix he's just going for am i going high or low it's fuzzy guardable and everything but you will die off of that hit even from 80 percent so you need to be really really careful about what you choose to take and what you don't choose to take very nice i would level three him here Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just gonna set up. Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. This is death. Meter penalty should run out in time for the dive. Yep. Now you can you can if you want to save a little meter. You could vanish here and then do auto combo. Um and you would probably get a level one kill. Spending two bars instead of three. That being said, right, if your nerves are flaring and you're afraid that you're going to drop things, it's totally fine to do what you did. Just take the level three kill. Don't don't worry about it. Meter comes easy in this game, so I wouldn't get too caught up. Mm -mm. Now, there, there's uh, there's some there's some interesting, interesting situations here. So this is where we're going to we're going to use new technology. So the way that you start you start neutral here, right? You go up into the air with Beerus. Okay. He tries to snipe you with 2S, but you avoid, which is nice. Then you try again. You go up and you, you pester him with key blasts, key blasts, which is fine. Okay. Now, let's talk. This is really important. So, wait, you're facing UI Goku, right? 
Uh, and this is this is uh, this is a very 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 important topic. <clears throat> when you play against any character, for that matter, every character has what I like to call an effective range. <clears throat> what does that mean? That means where can they hit you on the screen at any given time, right? And and depending on how fast that they can do those things, <clears throat> kind of drives how you play neutral. Now, UI Goku, his fastest thing in neutral is this, right? It's 5S. <clears throat> Covers lateral, right? This is his fastest option. At any given time, when you're playing neutral, this is his fastest option. What does that mean? That means that he is most likely to choose this option in neutral because it is the fastest. And also on top of that, right? It leads to, even if you block it, right? It leads to a vanish situation where he can vanish in and take a turn for free if you happen to block this. So, in neutral, you should be biased towards avoiding laterals because you're playing a character that also does not have rapid key blasts. That being said, UI Goku's uh, UI Goku's five minutes, I believe, clashes with key blasts. So if you wanted to play, you know, the key blast game where you're just kind of pestering him and trying to get a favorable trade, you can do that. But it's kind of risky. It's it's kind of risky against UI Goku in general. Uh um, it is very difficult for for you to contend with this as Beerus because you're not playing a rapid key blaster. Now he does also have other things we saw two ads earlier to cover diagonals, right? He can also jump and look to JS, right, to call out your aerial option. However, these, this is the order of how fast those things are, right? The 5S will be fastest, followed by 2S, followed by jumping and then 5S. These are the three main ways that UI Goku is going to play long range neutral. What does that mean? That means you should be playing up here, right? You should be playing up here because the time that it takes him to do these things, reactable you have time right you have time to do these things you have time to assess the situation and then go from there right whereas 5s is much harder to deal with now there are some other things to consider here you might be thinking well there's system mechanics and you're right he could just fucking super dash at you right like he could just do that right because that's just the way this fucking game works but these are the, the, the these concepts are all under the assumption that you recognize the threat of the system mechanics and can at least respond in time to block them, right? Because if you if he super dashes at you and you block, nothing happens, right? He has no assist to even force the, the super dash assist situation. He can't force any type of lockdown because of course your jump resources replenish after you block anything in the air. <clears throat> so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, what I'm worried about is what what is the player most likely to choose a neutral, which of course, like we talked about before, is this 5S. So you want to pay a really, really big attention whenever you're playing against you know characters like this in neutral. It's much easier. It's it's much easier to deal with like UI Goku in neutral that has very pronounced, uh, pretty pronounced effective ranges, right? And and the speed between those between those options is pretty drastic as opposed to like a character that has stronger neutral which should cover much more of the screen at once um and and, and makes it much harder to just kind of move around in neutral in general so holy shit Now, listen, you might be frustrated. You might think you have to do something crazy in order to come back into the game. And in this situation, it worked, but I would caution against choosing an option like this. Now, keep in mind that Dragon Ball Fighters has three types of knockdowns. Well, it actually has more than three types of knockdowns, but for, for, for simplicity's sake, it has three types of knockdowns. It has soft knockdown, it has sliding knockdown, and it has hard knockdown. Soft knockdown having the most amount of options that your opponent can choose off of a tech, sliding having a little bit less, and then hard knockdown having the least as they have to wake up the same way every single time, right? So he does a hard knockdown off of level three, which means that you are forced essentially to take something. All he has to do is a simple IED media, he hits your character and you die, right? You just die because he can just spark and do the easiest ABC combo in the world and you just die. What is much safer in this situation, just press sparking. Just press parking. You don't have to take a risk like this, especially because if you don't, right, you're going to die with sparking, which is a shame given that it is the most, it is the strongest resource in the game. 
<laughs> sparking blast is absolutely insane so there should never be a situation where you're at risk of dying with sparking unused because sparking cues is, it causes huge swings in momentum uh and it, sometimes it just straight up flips it on its head and yeah you really got to learn how to utilize that tool as it is uh it causes the most important situation in the game which is the sparking scramble okay let's see what happens here you're playing up oh, yep okay you both decide to super dash she just pulls the trigger first that seems to be like a theme with this set doza is just being more decisive with his actions than you are which is fine uh you probably feel maybe a little uncomfortable maybe a little nervous playing against someone as strong as him that being said you can't let that hinder your decision making okay scrambles here nice 2h i like that uh you can go for an uh, okay like i said you can go for a vanish extension there would get a little bit more damage uh um and the reason that going for a little bit more damage there might be good is because uh on a bait situation uh the the difference between like 20 percent health and like 30 percent health can actually be quite significant like <laughs> can, can be qu quite significant so you want you want to be very careful oh wow this is actually uh unfortunately not able to get the conversion that you're looking for but that orb had a fucking mind of its own but the other orb actually messes up your combo which just feels bad backdash 2m okay seems like you're pressing 2m quite a lot on beerus want to be careful about that that button is still not great nice not biting are we gonna dp nice fuzzy jump out of the situation i like it you gotta watch for this 5s again also, you want to be careful about jump resources, right? So, a concept that I teach quite a lot is the concept of saving your double jump. Mm -mm. The reason is that double jump is life in this game. If you're in a situation like this where you've burned double jump, then we know, right? Me as a player that, that knows how to play the game, I know that you are forced to land, right? You're forced to essentially land straight down. Meaning that since you cannot, you can't even see my character right my angles of pro my angles of approach are now much stronger i can run forward right i could run forward all the way across the screen to me to you i could 5s to me to your landing meaning that if you jump again if you jump again you get hit on your jump startup right i could super dash right did it go well i haven't no no, no. It, it's it's after it's after the the stream today <laughs> it's after the stream today so so these these things are are very very potent because you cannot see right you can't see what i'm gonna do you cannot predict what i'm gonna do and i know exactly where you have to be because you burned your double jump so it makes it infinitely easier for me to win neutral because i can just throw something to, to meet your landing you're gonna be forced to take it no matter what because you cannot reflect while you're in the air so this is very very important that you hold on to this double jump as long as you possibly can do not burn it egregiously only double jump when you need to right super jumping that's what makes super jumping so strong you might look at some other people play neutral and you see them super jumping a lot the reason is because super jumping allows you to cover just as much ground while giving you aerial control while also preserving double jump so if you need to change your air trajectory to avoid something from your opponent you can just do that The only issue is that besides landing, Beerus can also super dash, but that's way less scary. If you burn double jump, yeah, you can super dash or you can vanish. You can even press a button on the way down. You could press a special move to try to delay your air trajectory. You know what beats all of those options? 2H. That's, that's why it's so important. Literally everything that you do post double jump is gonna lose to 2H. So I have no reason, I have no reason to not just your space right i'm i see you double jump and you will see this right like nitro so, so i'm glad nitro's here because this, this is actually a very important concept right and, and we taught and, and nitro and i talked about this way 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 back like when we were at uh, irl hocs we talked about this concept of like when someone burns a double jump you will notice that when when high level players play this game the moment the double jump gets burned it's time to go in like you just you just run forward like literally like you will see this like go watch go watch any high level players play the moment that bird that double jump gets burned you will see i'm fucking going in because i can deal with everything you cannot deal with everything that i'm gonna do you don't know what i'm gonna do here right i could run forward you land from your double jump i could cross you up even right 
go to the other side. I could grab your landing, which is something that Coach Steve likes to do. He sees people's double jump and he likes to grab their landing because you're scared. You don't know what the fuck they're gonna do. You know, <laughs> you have no clue what they're gonna do at all. And that that the fear of the unknown just makes you freeze, and, and you cannot deal with everything. <clears throat> So that's why holding on to that double jump is so important because you can just avoid the situation altogether. That's not one you want to be in. Holy shit, knows this ham. What the fuck was this? <laughs> not even 5L, bro? Fucking 5H? Jesus fucking Christ, bro. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Look at it, nah, get the fuck out of here, Doza, bro. Nah, bro. <laughs> Look at the camera like that. Nah, fuck off, bro. Nah, bro. <laughs> hey, fuck off, man. Okay. So, again. Need my uh, I need my whiteboard for this. So, let's talk about uh So, we talked about effective ranges before. So, it really really important like when you're on when you're on the uh when you're on the when you're on this screen, right? This is how I like to talk about this. When I load into a game and it shows the characters, right? What I do is I look at my opponent's assists. I look what point character they're playing. And based on those things, that's how I choose to play my neutral, right? That, that's where I choose where I need to be on the screen. I think about, okay, they can cover this angle and this angle. So where do I need to put myself? So if you do that for this team, mm -mm. off of round start, Assuming Doze is not going ham, which which isn't a guarantee. Sometimes people just fucking go crazy, right? And they'll do stuff like YOLO Super Dash or, you know, Blue Goku's like to tackle a lot on round start. Tackle plus assist, right? <clears throat> he also is playing UI, which comes in at this angle, right? But Bardock is short range and will not hit you. Uh, he will not make contact on, like, most round start situations. And let's see forces you to block with like tackle or a button or something like that so bardock in neutral we don't really have to worry about too much because by the time that you're in the range of bardock neutral is over we're, we're we're now in a we're now in a close range like scramble situation or one of you is getting pressured so what does this mean um <clears throat> since ui covers this and blue goku is covering laterals right that means your dead zone is up here what does that mean that means it's very hard it's very hard for him to make contact with you if you go to the top corner of the screen. It's very difficult. <clears throat> and the reason is because he has nothing that makes contact there off of round start. Literally nothing, right? Nothing. Everything that he does that gets up there is reactable. If he wants to instant transmission or super dash, which are the two most common options that you'll run into here, it takes time. Easily reactable, right? Whereas playing the round start YOLO situation with tackle plus assist, now that, that is way harder to deal with. So what does that mean? Off of round start, that's where you should be, up here. Up in this top corner, I'm not interacting with your shit on round start. I'm gonna force you to take a really big risk to win neutral. So if you want a super dash assist, you can do that, but it's not gonna do shit to me in the air, right? <clears throat> and we're not gonna get hit by this like nonsense off round start. Round start's the most volatile, part. like it's so, it's so fucked sometimes that sometimes you don't even want to play it like <laughs> sometimes most of the time it's not going to be worth it especially because his round start is generally stronger than yours in this situation <clears throat> he just covers more ground in a shorter amount of time this is unfortunate it is actually very unfortunate you get you get clipped by the assist right because you you autopilot to ied backdash right which ui covers perfectly so what you want to do instead is super jump backwards uh to avoid assists but here, you take your turn back and you just don't have the long enough range button. You end up hitting Bardock instead of him, which is unfortunate. Taking your turn back there is not the worst idea, but, uh, you know, stubby 5 L's, it'd be like that. We can't all be UI. Hey, DP, Spark. Okay, 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 okay. So, this is, the, this is much better than what you did last time. Because last time you just kind of let Kohler die, right? You, you didn't try to spark, guard cancel, none of that. This time you actually take initiative. You realize that you have a DP and also sparking. This is actually like a fine decision. I'm, I'm okay with this. <clears throat> DP sparking, DP, Wawa has inspired so many. 
Very nice. Oh, just barely, just barely. Gotta be, gotta be a little bit quicker on the draw. You actually get the hit there with the anti-reflect, which is very good. What you can do instead as well, if you're afraid of the reflect situation, you can do an assist, right? Do the 6M with an assist, like late call Janemba to lock him in place. Uh, and then like, if he tries to do like reflect button or anything like that, he just gets hit. It, it, it's it's a free it's a free hit for you uh, and then the conversion afterwards is much easier as well so that that is definitely something to consider okay good tag still in the corner though so you want to be a little bit careful yeah so here you need to recognize that you're not hitting the point character right so you go up to the top of the screen you're shooting ui you have time to recognize like okay i'm not actually hitting the point character what i like to do in this situation is look at the health bars right if you see red on your point character then obviously you know that you've hit the point character otherwise you get cooked and, and a lot of people a lot of people do that so you you want to be careful <clears throat> knock down okay we're gonna meet okay try to jump out no assist here so so okay bardock uh bardock with no assist always 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 gotta look for gut punch why is it important to look for it well if you don't right he gets pressure reset on top of his assist regening right also on top of that it's a free punish if bardock gut punches and you reflect you literally get a punish every time <clears throat> there's there's no there's no ifs ands or buts about it you reflect gut punch you press your fastest button that'll hit at the range most of the time it's going to be key blast from people you just get a free punch so like gotta be looking for it whenever uh um whenever he's solo especially with assist it's much harder to deal with but uh, most of the time, people were not doing it with assist. Nice, you actually reflect the the empty low, so that tells me that you're actually paying attention to what you're getting hit by, which is very good, very nice. A little bit autopilot on the string there. Uh, you should live though. No sparking available. Oh, you got cooked. This is this is just a safe jump. So like this type of stuff, you just you just can't get hit by. Like you. <laughs> That if you can't if you can't block like a standard ID safe jump, it's gonna be really hard for you to win. So just gotta just gotta hold that, block it out. Oh, scary stuff! Scary stuff. Okay. Okay, both swinging. It's a dive kick. <clears throat> is it too late to submit analysis for today yes you guys literally have all everyone always does this everyone always waits until the day of analysis to be like can i submit like obviously you didn't care enough to submit earlier so good wow this is fucking fire bro must be nice holy shit Kill him! Kill him! Nice. I even would have considered bringing in Janemba there. Just because he has more health. Health management very, very important. Like, you're you're actually still at risk from dying, right, on Cooler. That's that's why I say this. Because if he hits you, especially because he has sparking, if he just wants to nuke your character, he can. Uh, whereas Janemba is going to live any one hit. Okay, so this can be 2H'd, but when I say this can be 2H'd, you want to be very, very careful about this, right? Because the grounded version cannot be 2H'd. Cannot be 2H'd, the grounded version. But if he goes airborne with 2H, whether he does the tackle or whether he does instant transmission, those all lose to anti -airs. Uh -uh. So you want to you wanna keep that in mind. Now, he can do dive kick. He can do dive kick to jail you if he wants to, I believe. I'm pretty sure he can do 2H dive kick to jail. But, like, if it jails, then you're just going to auto block anyway. Because it's, like, not an overhead or anything like that. If he delays it enough to where it, like, frame traps, uh, it's a hard confirmation for him. Very, very hard confirmation. and Especially because he's already pre-sparked. So, unless he's autopiloting into, like, empty vanish, like, it's very easy to miss. And the combo afterwards would not be that great. Oh, it's funny that he does this because like Blue Crew's dive kicks are mid, yeah? Like I, It's funny that that's what he chose. Like I, <laughs> I don't, I'm pretty sure it's not an overhead, so it's like 
<laughs> it looks like a triple overhead, but it's not. So look, look at this situation, right? See how you burn your double jump? See how, see how, see how much ground he covers the moment you burn double jump? Like, look at this. One, two. Like, he's running forward, sees the double jump. I'm going all the way in. Now you have to guess, right? From this range, there's so many different things he can do. And he almost hits your jump start up on that as well. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's difficult. You, you, you don't want to, you don't want to be burning that. Nice twitch, finally. Love to see it, love to see it. Don't let them get away with that shit. Once again, burning the double jump, right? Burn the double jump here. Let's UI just run in and press 5L. Free pressure. Challenge immediately. Holy shit. You dropped a combo though. Take a vanish combo here, I would. Yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm I would also level 3 him because it's UI. Next hit you get should kill him, like pretty much no matter what, as long as the combo is not trash. You kind of miss your meaty there though. Didn't run far enough. So you want to do you want to do micro dash first and then IED to make sure you make contact there. Hey, counters. Bro, meaty. Wow. You should also get acquainted with delay wake up and the tech options you have available. You haven't delay wake up once, and it's actually like one of the dumbest things in the game. Okay. That doesn't jail us, but those will let it rock. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Nice. Very well played. Very well played. So that's the second time that Doza has not respected teleport post vanish. And he gets cooked for it. Good shit. Like that. Okay, I like this. This is this is a pretty strong round start. Because it avoids his round start as well if you choose to, to play committal. And you're also ready with a 3H afterwards. A little bit late on it. But still get pressure out of this. Uh, I'm pretty sure they made it so when you 3H... Uh, when you do 3H5S with cooler now, you can actually just straight up hit confirm it. Uh, so if he if, if he's to get hit, if he gets hit by the 3H, um, you, you still get a full combo off of the 5S. At least that's what it looked like whenever I saw k play. play. <clears throat> so it might be better to choose that as your your tech your uh, your media option. Oh shit! Okay, scramble time. So okay, this is important. This is what you don't want to do. This is what you don't want to do because uh, your opponent has all the power here. So choosing this, this J2H, so you refine it until you press this J2H. This J2H does nothing, essentially, except put you into recovery. And you're also making it so you're inactionable uh, when your opponent has all the room in the world to move. Like, he can go anywhere on the screen at this point. Uh -um. And there's a lot of things to fear, right? You don't have to worry about empty vanish threat yet because he doesn't have a meter yet. But in most cases, in most scenarios, you will have to worry about that. And if you do this J2H, you actually just get full comboed out of empty vanish. They empty vanish ID, they punish your J2H, and they build like five bars on the combo. So be really careful about that. What's even scarier, I would say, in this situation is the threat of him just literally running himself out of the corner right and he also still has an assist available so if he runs himself out of the corner you still have to recover from this j2h and you are going to be forced to land just like we talked about before um <clears throat> so at this point you're at a scramble but your back is the corner so you have way less room to move so there's no reason for you to press this button which moves you forward into the corner and also put yourself into recovery it's best to play as little commitment as possible when your opponent has sparking because they're just going to be an advantage. Sparking is fucking stupid. So most of the interactions that are going to happen when you don't have sparking and your opponent does, they're just going to cook you. <laughs> that That's just kind of the way the game works. And I wish it wasn't that way, but it is. And this combo is fucking trash, Doza. If you end up watching this, Doza, what the fuck are you doing? What is that? 2M pre-spark? Yo, fuck off, bro.
Okay. You learned from the last situation. This is very nice. You hit the same situation happens where you call the assist. You hit the assist, but you don't vanish because you recognize that you didn't hit the point character. He tries to super dash you on a late reaction to the key blast, ready with the 2H. Absolutely fantastic play there. Love that. What I would I, what I would say though is that you need to be a little bit careful about how many key blasts you choose to shoot at once. So it seems like most of the time, whenever you're going up with Beerus, you're doing the full key blast string, like no matter what, right? I would get in the habit of just doing like two, uh, like instead of doing the whole string. The reason is because if you recover faster, um, it's not like the extra key blasts on the assist are actually going to make much of a difference. Uh, you can definitely still confirm off of less key blasts in the first place, and you're more likely to get your opponent just YOLO super dashing at you once they see you key blasting. Those that just had old man reactions here and just like took off super late, I don't know what he was looking for, but um, there will be situations where you're not able to answer effectively because you shoot too many key blasts. We actually see it quite a lot. Okay, nice, nice. Like that. Waiting for two H's. I dig it. A little bit missed on the media. You definitely need to go to training mode and practice uh, making contact with your opponent post text. Yeah, uh, he's he's hit you off of tech situations a few times now, so want to be careful. Those that got boom reactions, no, he doesn't. He just slow reacted there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you try to mash, you get you got punched, and this hurts a lot. It would have hurt more if Doza knew how to do combos. <laughs> I'm flaming Doza because that's my man. So like, <laughs> okay. It was actually a really cool bait here. It's a cool bait. Teleport back into assist. Now, if you would have confirmed on it, it would have been even better. I like the concept though. Just need to practice converting off of it. Oh, this is really bad. You actually died. Um, if Doza just did, he has two assists available. Easy, easy extension, and he has a level two on two different characters. He definitely died, but he just takes the easy way out and does the level three. So you get another chance. Nice tech. Yeah, teleport. Looks like you're choosing teleport on, on almost every situation there. Do want to be a little bit careful. It is a strong tool. But it does not beat everything. Nice 3H. Nice. Like that. Oh, I tried to extend with Beerus, but two characters makes the combo uh, awkward. Okay, just playing the spacing game. Nice. Gets the reflect. Chunks of life here. Okay. Nice. Those are reflect pressing reflect a lot in strings, so nice nice on you to recognize that and punish him for it. Very important. Holy shit, that was scary. He's also getting hit by a lot of 2Ms. Maybe he's just holding up during strings. Okay. So, what you want to switch to, what you want to switch to since he's already shown that this is what he's going for in neutral, right? We talked about this 5S on UI, right? If you reflect it, I guarantee you that you're going to run into situations where they just autopilot uh, and you just completely nullify, you, you completely nullify this, uh, this vanish, this vanish plus frame pl pressure. I think that UI gets 2H on 5S vanish. If you reflect the 5S, I could be wrong on that though. I'm not 100%. I'm not sure if the gap is is uh, is is large enough to sneak up 4 frame and vulnerability. But if it can't be 2H, it can definitely be LDP'd. It can definitely be LDP'd if it cannot be 2H'd. Um, so it's a free punish for you if you just reflect the 5S. And that's pretty much all he's going for in neutral, so. You don't even have to take the risk on DP there if you just answer the the, the method that is so so a lot of a lot of fighting games is preventing the situation from happening right a lot of people think about fighting games in terms of a situation happens how do I deal with the situation right when 
in in reality fighting games are a lot about mitigation about doing whatever you can to not let the situation to arise in the first place so instead of asking whenever ui vanishes in on me and is plus two what do i do about the plus frame situation you should be asking yourself what can i do to avoid him from getting free plus frames in the first place right well you can do that by avoiding five minutes in neutral altogether or being ready to deal with it whenever it comes out with a reflect right it, it, that that mentality switching from you know reacting purely to the situation uh and and you know answering it before it comes out will 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 make you much safer player in general because now you don't have to take a risk on the plus frame situation on the rps you just never give them the chance to get pressure started in the first place which takes stress off of you makes games a lot easier okay or in the last character situation yeah just spamming plus frames nice cross up not fast enough though or not close enough to get the confirm extension okay took an ex Now he can special tech vanish, so I'd be a little bit careful. Holy shit, I'm so good at this. <laughs> so, so, what, what, what just happened, right? What just happened? What happened is I am assessing the situation based on the resources of my opponent. This is really, really important for situations like this because what your opponent is able to do, right, changed mid super, right? You might not think that that happened, but it did. So what happened here is you take the knockdown and you level three him, but your opponent gains meter when you hit them, right? And that includes on your level three. So the moment that he gets a bar here, I'm like, man, special tech is something now that I have to structure around. I have to, I have to make sure that i don't get hit by special tech because he has the bar or, or, or he has the bar which he doesn't need a bar to special tech but he needs a, a bar to make it safer hmm. now it is more punishable now than it used to be but when nerves are going on and you've also proven that you're not taking your turn every single time uh you know whenever it is your turn i'd be very careful about stuff like this so hmm the media that you choose here is like okay right however take it a step further next time right you meet the orb and that's great but you have to answer this right kill him for this the game is over he's giving you the game right that's what he's done here by choosing special tech he's put he's put the game in your hands what do i mean by that he's chosen an option that if you react to you win right straight up if the effort the the all the 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 fate of the game is in your hands you are the only one that has the game in their hands at this point he chose special tech that means it is on you you determine the outcome of the game so you have to be ready right you have to be ready for stuff like this especially in tense situations a lot of the time people just don't want to hold any type of pressure in last character situations they're going to do anything that they can to get out right you choose a special tech you do not 2h him you also don't even have to 2h you could also dpm and the almost the same thing would happen in the, in the in the situation but this is very easily reactable you put the orb out right and if he blocks the orb you have time to visually confirm okay he blocked orb let me start my pressure but he never blocked it so you know that some type of invulnerability had to come out right on top of that right he special text and you block he gives you another chance to end the game by doing this vanish if you can't 2h the special tech you definitely can special you can definitely 2h <laughs> you can definitely 2h the vanish right very 2hable the game is also over here because the only other thing that he can he can he can try to rps you but you're safe to everything he can super right he can level one uh the beam super which is punishable on block he can counter if you block the uh if you block the special tech uh which means if you try to press a button into him you risk getting countered but most people are not going to choose that risk at this point of the game or he can spend the meter and vanish which he did here and you mitigate all three of those options by just answering the special tech itself and that's what i mean by instead of asking how to deal with the situation now that the special tech is blocked has been blocked you should be asking yourself what can i do 
to not let him do this in the first place, right? And the answer is just fucking Antier. That's just, <laughs> that's just what it is. Because now, right, what happens is you pass up two opportunities to win the game. This is now plus on block. And this is this is a weird, weird mentality. Weird mentality thing when it comes to Dragon Ball Fighters. People have this idea that whenever there was an opportunity for them to punish and they don't punish. So, i.e., for example, let's say someone does a really, really unsafe vanish like let's say someone does like uh fireball into vanish on like 21 let's say she does like two through six l right and you reflect it and they vanish now what should happen is you should 2h them for it because you reflected you're completely actionable it's a free hit right however sometimes you miss it right and you let the vanish rock and you block it the fact that you missed the opportunity does not change your frame data unfortunately it doesn't it doesn't work that way you have now missed your opportunity. He gave you two opportunities. You missed on both of them. And now he's plus two on block. It does not change his frame data, right? This vanish is plus two, regardless of what happened in the situations before. So your choice to press here, very ill-advised. Very, very ill-advised. There's not really a reason for you to press a button there. If anything, you could take a chance on DP if you wanted to. But there's no reason for you to press any button but Reflect here or DP. Those are the only two options that you should take a risk on if you're going to take anything. Oh, oh man, this is rough. Man, this is unfortunate because like this media is really whack. Like I don't You you actually so so the crazy part about this situation is that if you literally just mash auto combo, you'd have won the game. Cause he 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 you you are actually plus there when he whiffs the, the JH. You could literally do anything. You could go up for an air to air, you could mash, you could like literally do anything. It's unfortunate. Uh you just didn't you you chose to do like you chose you chose to reflect before the situation played out, right? It was programmed in your mind. You were thinking, okay, I'm just gonna reflect on wake up, like pretty much no matter what happens here. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to prevent falling buttons or whatever. Um, and unfortunately, it, 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 he wins off of a mistake. He, he tried to meet you, and he fucking missed an air dash for all, for all, uh, <laughs> for all, of all things to lose to. You lose to to a missed ID. However, right. You have time, right? Don't you, you 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 have time to wait and be like, okay, this is what he's doing. Then let me choose my option. You don't have to choose it super early, but that is unfortunate. Sometimes shit like that just happens in this fucking game, though. Like sometimes people win off of mistakes. That's what happened here. But however, right? You might be thinking, man, I'm just really unlucky. It's really unfortunate. I don't feel sorry for you, okay? I don't because he gave you two opportunities to win the game back here. You did not take them, right? If you take these opportunities to win the game, you never get into that situation in the first place, right? The game, the set just ends. So this is why it's important, why these things are important, right? Because you never have to, the, the unfortunate circumstances never present themselves if you just enter the special tech into Vanish in the first place. So yeah, it's, it, 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 it's hard. It's hard for me to feel bad for you in that situation because you gifted him the game on a platter. That's what you did. Now, shit happens, right? Don't don't get discouraged by this. You actually played like pretty okay, all things considered. There's some things to clean up. Uh, I would say think more about your movement in the game, right? Save those double jumps. Try to transition to super jumping and even moon jumping more. They made moon jumping way easier now. You can hold S and then do a dash jump to moon jump. Covers a ton of space, especially when you're playing cooler that has giant buttons to add on to it. Makes it really, really potent in the neutral game. So I would look at that, right? Pay attention to your opponent's habits on defense. If you had recognized that Doza is literally mashing reflect and jump on every single one of your strings, then that means that you should you be structuring stupid. your offense What's to play around those things. 10. Bro. 21. You stupid. Like why? Why? Fuck off, bro. Um, I'm actually timing you for that. I'm trying to be serious here. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying. 
Now I fucking lost my train of thought because this guy. But no, no, no. Okay. So if, if you go back and you watch the strings that you did, right, you will notice that Doze is getting hit a lot trying to jump. He's getting hit a lot trying to reflect, right? So your whole offense is structured around punishing him for doing those things until he adapts, right? Because that is exactly what Doza did to you. <clears throat> he put you in block stun and he noticed that you weren't blocking fake high into go low, right? And so every time he did a block string, he did the same thing and he got the hit a few times for it. Now, eventually you did adjust and you did start blocking it, but until your opponent shows you that they can defend against the option, there's not really a way to switch up what you do in offensive situations. You don't want to make your job harder for yourself for no reason, right? There's no reason for that. No reason for you to make your job more difficult. It's already difficult enough to beat players of the stature, so you want to make it as easy on yourself as possible. So, like I said, focus on movement, pay attention to the habits, watch your own as well, right? You have some bad defensive habits. More blocking, less committal. That's what you need to do, right? Because blocking in this game is not losing. You're not losing when you're blocking in this game. You have a lot of options, especially now. You have guard cancel. You have uh, fucking guard cancel vanish. You have sparking. <clears throat> if they leave gaps, then you open the door for reflect, reversals, you know, mashes, all that shit. Jumps. There's, there's so many things you can do on defense, right? There's a ton of things. But knowing what to use when is the, the most difficult part of it. So you need to pay attention to that. You're choosing very high committal defense most of the time. You're doing DP or mashing reflect on wake up like almost every time. So sometimes, especially whenever your opponent is a solo character or doesn't have a, you know, maybe the mix isn't too potent with the assist that they're running. It's okay to block it out. It, it's fine. You can block until you run your opponent out of resources. And then now you're playing a 2v1 assist advantage. Does this sound familiar? It should because it's literally how Goichi beats people. Right? That's literally how he beats people. The shit that is blockable and fuzzy guardable, he blocks it out. You have no resources. Now he's playing neutral with two assists to one to, to zero. And he just smokes you because it's very hard to win in Dragon Ball Fighters with an assist disadvantage. So these are things that you want to think about moving forward. But you did not play badly. You should be proud of yourself for playing this way. But I think if you clean up these things, then maybe next time you'll clutch it out instead of you know having having shit with the UI happening. But okay. On to the, the next set. All right, we're gonna get, we're gonna switch on the, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna swap up music. Let's see here. Uh, let's go to Luma Pools. Okay, add as well because uh, I haven't run an ad in a while. This is for one of my regulars, Vermeer. Oh god, it's Lucar, huh? <laughs> so the reason I say oh god is because uh for those of you who don't know, these two have been they've had quite honestly like Lucar is kind of Vermeer's bracket demon. To be honest. Um but they've run into each other a lot. Like they've played each other so much at this point. So uh we're going to see some weird shit. We're going to see some weird shit. And we have a 16 mirror to fucking start. Good dash block. So this is gonna be a, a, a bit higher level. Uh and that's that's no disrespect to to you know Nox's brother or anything like this, but these are two players that are 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 very, very well proven in tournament, and they also know each other very, very well. So things are gonna move quite quickly uh in comparison to the last set, where you know neither player really knows each other all that well. Wow, what a sick backdash. This is good. Plus rings, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. More. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, you of all people should know that, like, when when Lucar does a string like this, and he does five S, right? He can't command grab you here. Uh -uh. He can't command grab you here because of the pushback. So you you can be ready with a GC reflect, um, and then you you you're in a much better situation than just taking the plus rings. You were ready for it there. You just didn't go all the way through. Nice. Fuzzy jump. I would say, um, I would even like to see like a fuzzy jump into like, you could tag here too, right? Uh, or even fuzzy jump plus assist and land with a button makes it way safer.
236 is uh it's not plus it's minus one though so it's it's yeah it's still rps it, <laughs> yeah um move is really good and i'm pretty sure lucar is switching between the two as well What happened here? I wasn't looking. Oh, he drops the combo. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You're actually like okay with this. This is like fine. Uh, I would be looking for a super dash assist here. I think Lucar is Lucar playing B. I didn't see what assist he's running on 16. Okay. Yeah, he's playing B. Okay. Nice, following button, pressure time, 6M. Pretty hard to hit Lucar with stuff like that. Okay, RPS after Dragon Rush tech. Hesitated. So the counter actually activates off of the assist and not you. So you just like kind of weren't ready here. <laughs> Pretty funny situation though. It doesn't happen very often, so I'm not I'm not mad at you for that. Whoa, G Yolo. Oh, you know better. You know better. This this is this is lazy. This is lazy neutral. There, there's no reason for you to YOLO, even though 5M is good, there's no reason for you to take the risk here. Look at your fucking blue life, bro. What are you doing? Even even if if you press this and Lucard does a defensive assist call, which he's known for, and you guys trade because that that happens a lot, you'll trade with the assist if he mashes it. You still are in a fucking horrible situation afterwards. This, yeah, I don't I don't like this decision at all. You you're better off just waiting for your assist to come off cooldown and then looking for tags. You can tag there, but you're not willing to tag before. Like, what are you doing? The fuck is that? Especially because he's in meter penalty. If you tag here and he two H's, he doesn't get the meter back to snap you. Yeah, I hate that decision. But now that he's out of meter penalty, he can snap. Will he take it? He does. Did you press? Oh, my bad. I don't know why it uh, went off of uh, repeat. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it, Yant. Okay. You didn't get counter hit, or did you? No, you just didn't block. Okay. <laughs> you do have frame one air and vulnerability there, so that has a gap. You could try to cheat your way out of the corner with Vegito. At least I think they made it frame one, right? I think that was the change that they made. <laughs> oh man, it's been a while since I've watched Lucar play, man. He was on hiatus for a while. Bought the assist, that's dope. Ah, I need a hit confirm. You missed this. Single hit hit confirms are hard, but can be done. It can be done. A little bit too predictable there on the key blast though. Gohan goes through. He drops the combo though. Okay. Uh not close enough to confirm. Have to watch out. DP's way faster now, so. Too early on the command grab. Oh, we are scrambling. Another misconfirm. Uh, you need to you need to learn how to exercise restraint here. Too many times, this happens to a lot of you. Too many times, you guys literally whiff in someone's face and you just keep mashing. That like, you have to be able to realize like, oh shit, I whiffed. So let me stop, so I don't fucking get punished. Because that's why you get punished here is because you whiff and then you just try to match 5M and you just get the free route tag. So just just relax. <laughs> hey, 
Yeah, you got mixed. Didn't have to take it though. Because uh, GC Reflect was still on the table. Okay. A little bit more initiative this game. It's hit by Vegeta Assist. Holy yeah, okay. Yeah, air to air attempt. You avoid UI, which is really nice. Man, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda hate this too. And this is the habit that you have where you always, always, always press something coming down. Like, your assist got cooked here, so... If he just runs forward and presses a button and is not a bitch, which you're gonna run into people that are not not a bitch here, right? Like, if I if I put if I put Nitro in this situation and he has UI out and you do shit like this, he's running forward and pressing 5L every time. Because you burn double jump resource, right? So there's no reason for me to stop. I, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna run forward with Bardock and fucking just press auto combo. Hey, you're gonna get smoked. Mm -mm. So be careful with that. Okay, checks your air dash. You should know better because you're literally playing the same character as he is right now. <laughs> Maybe you just didn't think Lucar would choose it, but he's it, Lucar's choosing more bus style options. Uh, this set than he usually does, which is good. Sunshine Ho with the tier one. Thank you. Okay, whiff reflect still tag. Luckily, he doesn't get punished. Plus frames. Guard cancel vanish, okay. That's a uh that's a seasonal change by the way. They made it so when you're when you are in the process of a vanish, your opponent's vanish becomes frame one invulnerable. So it makes answering uh it makes answering vanish on vanish scenarios way easier. such a weird situation like they're literally they're, this was a this was a frame perfect sync this is called like you caught you guys called 16 on the same exact frame wow You didn't even get counter hit there either. <laughs> Maybe just tried to jump or leave. Hey, up tech sword. Please give Vegito out. Okay. It works out, but oh, M legs, bro. What are you doing? You did L legs? Why? I, that's missed. Missed big combo there. Peter gain too. It's the more important part. <laughs> nice confirm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Hmm. Wow. He could have killed for sure. I okay. Blue car things. Good guard cancel. I'm 
smoked. looks kind of scary. I think he can probably DP that on reaction, but he wasn't ready. Funnily enough, Lucar is scrambling way better than you this set. Like, way, way better. Yeah, Fidel's so good, bro. What the fuck, bro? Can you kill something, please? Thank you. <laughs> please. Absolutely cooked. You just didn't expect the chaos poster flight. Lucar managed to lose his game. Is that why the bot is so long? You in this fight, you're just trying to armor shit in neutral, like when you know that your character doesn't have any health, like. I don't like that. I don't like the game plan. I don't like the game plan. And we kill him. Play last character situations. Okay. Both just fucking went him. You bet you bet the set on that? Okay. I see. I see. A lot of ways that can go wrong. <laughs> yep. Down tech. Down tech into madness, right? A lot of people do this. They down tick and they're trying to, you know, down tick mash or down tick into move, and you could just definitely just get meated immediately afterwards. So, just because you choose down tick doesn't mean you get to ignore everything afterwards. For dash assist. Okay. Plus frames. Oh, it tries to call out the jump. I don't know why he did it that way, though. That was a very risky way to try to call out jump <laughs> at that point. Okay, this is this is really dumb on your part for me. And, and and like I said, if you're watching this YouTube video and you're like, man, this guy's being really harsh to this guy, it's because Vermeer Vermeer is one of my earlier students. He's gotten tons of analysis from me. We've talked about the game a lot. He's done a lot of improving. He's a great player, but sometimes he's just an idiot. And 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 I think I think my language it, it serves to to really hammer at home that the decisions that you make sometimes are just really not good. So what do I mean by this? So you're in with Broly and you're zoning and this is all fine and dandy. Videl cannot reach you. You see him getting hit by Keyblash trying to do something, right? This is, this is very important. You see him in neutral getting hit by Broly's Keyblast. And while you are not able to confirm it, this gives you information, right? He's obviously trying to do something or else he would not be getting hit by these Keyblasts. So in my eyes, right? What is the next step? If he's not super dashing, then what else can he do? Oh wait, he has the projectile invulnerability on the command grab. And on top of that, right, 
you don't have when you're when your broly is out this is really important for your team by the way vermeer when you're when your broly is out and you have two assists they're all key blast property they're all key blast property you have no beam property assist right so very very important that you're looking for stuff that beats key blasts because all of its key blasts 5s the Gito assist 16 assist all key blast property moves meaning that you're way more susceptible to being super dashed and people trying to choose moves to cheat through neutral with projectile invulnerability right way more so it's just something that you got to look for so in my eyes when i see someone get hit twice trying to force their way in because that's what he's trying to do right he's trying to force his way in without super dashing because he's afraid of getting too aged this is the next step right run forward just yolo command grab I think sticks are. This has been smoking you a lot too. Four teching is the wrong choice. Four teching is the wrong choice. You can you can on four tech you can cover almost everything with sixteen. Uh whereas like down tech and delay tech are way safer against it, I would say. If you die if, if you delay tech there and he tries to call out four tech, he just kinda loses a lot. Because you won't even be in the range for him to call UI and be meaty anymore. Uh, alternatively, it's fucking Broly. Why'd you not spark here? Oh, oh no. I, I, I wouldn't have taken that. I wouldn't have 4-attacked, though. I think the 4-attack is where you got yourself in trouble. And now you're down a Broly. Which is your only non-key blast property assist which means you're at a severe disadvantage in neutral you tried to press yet yeah, five eld part you could have tried to disengage i think but Okay, I was like, eventually, like, are, are you gonna do something or? Can we sub goal teaching Lucar combos? Foolish of you to assume that I would be able to teach Lucar combos. We've been telling Lucar to learn combos for literal years now. <laughs> this is a good answer to special tech. You respond to their tweet? Their tweet? What did they tweet? <laughs> I don't know what they tweeted, but I, I just I did a job application through their site and got an interview. Oh, I, no, I didn't respond to the tweet. I, I literally went to their site and applied because sometimes I just go through uh, sites of teams and just like to see if they have positions open. Yeah, you get fucking smoked. Living though. What the fuck? You're so whack, Lucar. Hmm. Why, like, why would you take the chance on that when your opponent's also in sparking, so they could just empty vanish out of like pretty much anything? Like, ah, right, bro, <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty silly. We're at 288 subs right now. We have two tier threes, so they're not gonna show up in that. What the fuck? Probably just you trying to call assist. Fucking got smoked. 
Didn't expect for him to make contact. Pretty unfortunate. Oh, okay, no, he was solo with adult. I thought you, like, killed an assist or something. Oh, you just got outplayed. Outnooched. 5L. Oh, about choosing 5L there. I think sometimes you should just try to anti-air people. Like you see him, you see him whiff this, right? See how he whiff this? Go for the anti-air, right? You could land in EX command grab. You probably would have got the hit here because he pressed again, right? I would try that next time. Uh, feedback. Uh, you're getting fucked really hard by 16B. You're like reflecting the first part of it, but you're not doing anything with the second part. So you're still giving him free blocks then uh, to go for like mixes and whatnot. <clears throat> he is out scrambling you like really hard. Like he's he's really out playing you in scrambles right now. Um, and I think part of that is because of indecisiveness. You, you either need to choose to play the scramble or choose to not play the scramble. Whichever one you choose doesn't fucking matter, but it has to be one or the other. You can't be indecisive in situations like that because you're already getting hit by the time that you try to escape. That happened a lot, right? Where in that situation where you both called 16B at the same time, right? And you, you sat there for a while and then you're like, okay, now I'm going to try to escape. You would have been better off straight up trying to escape from the jump or literally trying to hit him. One or the other. One or the other. Decisiveness. Really important. <clears throat> You need to think about how you need to adjust the style of game that you're playing when your team is in certain orders. So like I said, with when Broly is in, you're playing double key blast property assist. The, the game completely changes when you don't have a beam property to work in neutral, right? Or physical, right? Completely changes. Because you're, you're much more susceptible to system mechanics. So that means you have to play slower. It's just the way it is. Because if you don't, then you're going to get super dashed and you're going to get you know, EX command grabbed or someone's going to do a projectile and vulnerable lariat and smoke your shit, right? So you need to pay attention to that. You can't autopilot with, with those assists behind Broly. It doesn't work. It's like literally does not work. You cannot do that. <clears throat> have to pay attention to how the game must change whenever you have certain characters on point or, or the certain assist behind them. <clears throat> really, really important. Uh, on top of that, you are trying to steal turns too much. <clears throat> now, stealing turns in, in, in against someone like Lucar is pretty strong sometimes, right? If you see that he's literally just like blocking it out, not doing anything, it's okay for you to take another turn. However, these are not the situations that you're getting hidden. The situations that you're getting hidden is that you're whiffing something and then trying to press again afterwards when it's not your turn, right? When you whiff, generally, it's just not your turn anymore. So sometimes you just have to concede that, all right, I whiffed. Now I have to take pressure as a punishment. You're lucky that you're not getting hit in the situations, but sometimes you did. Sometimes you literally ate a punish because you whiffed and then you tried to do something afterwards and you, you got hit for it. Sometimes you have to concede the turn uh, once you've made the bad decision. You must suffer the consequences for your actions. Trying to avoid the consequences of your actions can lead to you getting punished even harder than you would have originally, right? If you whiff a 5L on Broly, very rarely are they actually gonna press a button in time to punish the 5L. <clears throat> right? So you would have been okay to just block. It's your punishment. That's your consequence. You have to take a block string. As opposed to trying to bash 5M after you've whiffed, and now he gets a raw tag combo. Right? That punishment is way harder than just taking the block string. So, just 
let him take his turn sometimes. It's fine. Like, it's it's not that big of a deal. But you can make it a big deal if you try to continually escape the consequences of your actions. So, um, and I think that's, that's like, at essence, like, a lot what happened this set. Uh, and you're also not, you're not defending against the stuff that he's biasing towards a lot. He's doing a lot of empty low. Um, he's also doing, like, super dash into falling button a lot, right? And you're playing three characters with anti-air command grabs, right? Well, I guess Broly's is technically air to air. So two characters with anti-air command grabs, right? You can check shit like that. You're, you're able to. You're, you have the, you, you have the tool set on your team to check things like that. So if you don't ever check him, he's just going to keep doing it over and over and over again. And you're obviously getting hit by it. So that's a problem. So, so at least establish that, okay, I have the answer to this motherfucker. So stop doing it, right? At least make him think twice about the option that he's choosing or else you're going to struggle. So still, still some, it's still some shit to work on for sure. Um, you know, I, I think he's, I think he's your hardest matchup. So once you, once you figure out what to do in this matchup, I think things will be a lot easier for you across the board. Uh, but until then, we gotta we gotta keep doing work. So keep working on it. Okay, next set. I also have to switch songs again. Um, let's do. Uh, how about dancer? How you guys, feel about that? Let's do let's do dancer. I don't think dancer gets DMCA'd. Oh, whoops. I'm on the... Hmm. My hesitation. Oh, uh, he drops. Okay. This time. Nice. I'll probably get her out. Yeah. Don't think that. Does that work outside of the corner? I don't know if that works outside of the corner, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Damn, it's, this is such... It, this is exactly, this is exactly how you air to air. This, this is a testament on how you air to air. Like, like, look at, look at how there's like, there, when you watch people air to air in this game, you can tell who's doing it who's doing it on reaction who's doing it on a read right because how many people have you seen like literally guess that their opponent is going to jump and just like randomly dash jump and hope to get something and then they end up like whiffing over their opponent's head you can tell that in this situation hector waits for you to elevate right he positions himself a bit closer to you right he, he moves just a bit forward the position well and the moment he sees you jump interception right that's really really good strategy uh, from him and 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 because because he's someone that is air to airing on reaction <clears throat> You need to be really careful about like up backing and pressing buttons, right? Yeah, you got to be really mindful because like put plainly This is a a, a a pretty weird scenario for you because think about if if Goku gets here Let's say Goku gets here, right? If he's coming from underneath you, right? He's in an advantage because there are not many buttons that you can press to hit underneath you, right? There's not that many things that you could press to get the hit on someone beneath you. you just aren't, especially ones that are quick, right? Because your jab will whiff because it goes this way, 
it doesn't hit an approaching character your jm also goes there right you could press down kame or key blast but they're both really slow so by the time you get those out you get counter hit because he's approaching from underneath you which is why it's very dangerous to up back and press buttons in this situation the person that is lower is generally at an advantage so you want to be really careful about choosing to press it's okay to jump here but you got to be ready to block you, you you have to you have to be, essentially be ready to take something if you're going to choose to jump back now what you could have done instead is like try to moon jump out of the corner right <clears throat> you could sense that there's a gap here and try to jump out to disengage but the moment you choose to jump back you got to be ready to block because you're you're gonna you're gonna lose like probably 90 percent of situations just because it's really hard for you to make contact with anything like it's, it's difficult uh with that with the speed that you need to in order to survive uh the situation so Mm -mm. Okay. Nice. Oh, I have to have to dash for it. This is one of those situations where um, you might have even tried. You, you might have tried to dash, but you got to realize that you got put into block stun, right? This was a trade situation. You're still in block stun from the 5L or from the, the, the L button that he chose. So you have to experience that recovery first, and then you're able to be actionable afterwards. So your dash has to be pressed later. Because if you press dash while you're in block stun, it's not going to come out. Because you obviously cannot dash while you're in block stun. So... That's probably why you missed that conversion. Okay, nice stagger. Okay, bit iffy on the conversion there. So the reason the reason that this is just a little bit iffy is because you can easily take a vanish combo, uh, and you also have a fourth bar, right? You you can take a vanish combo, and you're able to you're able to knock down and bring in hit, right? So it would it would probably be beneficial for you to take that route instead of. Trying to go for the full conversion there. Okay, but we get a clash. Uh, a little bit too early on the hit call. So, unfortunately, you drop a kill. And the bigger deal is that now your biggest health character is can't be tagged in. Wow, what a grab. I don't know what went through your mind here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, that, was, that was pretty him. You fat fingered M. Oh, I see. Happy accidents. Still would have brought in hit there on the even though you had enough to kill. Okay. He doesn't 2H, he reflects, so you catch a break. Mm-mm. This is technically fuzzy guardable. Uh, it might seem like it's like super real, but it is fuzzy guardable because the 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 overhead will always be faster than the low. <laughs> they, they he can't same frame you. Uh, he can't same frame you from mid screen like this because the pushback too well won't reach. So just something you want to be aware of. <laughs> Late hit cloud combos. I don't think I've ever seen that route before, actually. Too early on the grab. Good. Nice, not challenging after cartwheel. Or after SD, rather. Yeah, so the reason the reason that you get hit here is because you exhaust the resources before you grab. So he's ready he's ready to challenge. So this is this is block string philosophy, right? Uh, and pressure philosophy. So here, you are able to lock him down and you force him to block, right? You go for a string, you call your assist. At this point, all your resources have been expended. And most of the time, 
people choose to go for things like grabs and ID resets whenever they've lost all their resources. <clears throat> I guarantee you, if you would have brought him to the ground before the Kefla Sith came out, like if you would have went for grab before the Kefla, uh, uh, before you you did a Kefla Sith, you would have got you would have got the hit. I, I like guarantee because what he's doing is he's just waiting out your resources. He's like, okay, block string. He called Kefla. All right, now I think he's gonna go for a grab or a string reset of some kind, so I'm ready to mash. You don't want to give him that that streamlined like telegraphed uh, way of you know like, utilizing your resources because it makes it way easier to find good challenges. It's it's not it's it's not always go for grab when you have the resources. It's that if you're running your offense in a way where you're never going for grab, uh, if you're never going for a grab except for the times when you have no no resource, right? Then it's way easier to defend, like way way easier, right? Some people only grab whenever they don't have any assists left to continue their strings, so that makes it really easy for me as the defender to like jump out or press a button because I'm like, okay, you have nothing left, right? So, um, what you can also do there is just keep staggering, right? You you could you could continue to stagger even after you burn the assist because you have a zero on block two L now, right? And and essentially in Dragon Ball Fighters, when you have a zero on block button, it's essentially plus, um, at, or at least at least in 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 the Goku's case because you have Gatling property. So even though it's zero on block, you can late cancel into other buttons, which means that you're gonna your button's gonna come out faster than theirs. Uh, which makes it more likely for you to get a counter hit. Mm -mm. So don't be afraid to do so. And also don't be afraid to say like, okay, maybe I'm not going to get the hit here. So I'm just going to reset to neutral and just disengage. That's also fine. Okay. So you sparking here, which is good. Uh, you need to hold your vanish though. You did regular vanish, which is pretty awkward. Oh, okay. I don't know why he did all of that, but... <laughs> Is the end results the same? Okay. Nice, bait. Hmm. It's worth considering not level 3 in here. Just because your sparking timer is running. Uh, and you are burning your own sparking time. But at the same time, you're also burning his. So it's probably okay. Oh shit! wasn't wasn't a bad decision to try the the Larry. You haven't shown it yet, and he was key blasting before. He just chose he just chose the decision that answered it. Sometimes that just happens. Oh, it drops. Hmm? I like your prioritization of. Uh, Green positioning is as opposed to the pressure or damage there. Very good. Oh, missed 6 HMD. It's fine. Doesn't jail. At least to my knowledge, this doesn't jail. So free free reflect. Free reflect into uh you, you could you could do the Lariat move. Um And sometimes it's going to be a punish, and sometimes it's not going to be a punish. But it's minus five on block, so it's like not a big deal. Oh, oh shit. He was just he was just ready. Plus frames to, to true punish. Wasn't a bad idea, but he was ready. Empty low.
Are you really going for that? I shouldn't be surprised. Okay. It's unfortunate, but you at least got the sparking from him. See the power of sparking there? You made him you made him burn a whole nother resource just to kill your point character. Say, uh, in some ways you're showing a little bit a little bit too much respect to him like sometimes you just got to test him with, with super dash and shit smoke by Jadamba a a lot yeah you gotta you gotta pay attention to the assist resources nice challenge there you go okay I would consider bringing in base Goku so like what you could have done here to be safer is uh vanish auto combo and then tag in uh base goku off of it or you can i mean i don't think hit has any i don't think he has any air special moves right yeah i don't think he has any air special moves <laughs> you, you can't you can't do the new rod tag mechanic but the old one still works So he changes. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that's fine. Mm -mm. I would say um, in, in situations like that where where we were talking about level threeing as the last character, I think in certain situations I still wouldn't level three for me personally because I want to give my opponent less time. To answer i don't want to give them the level three animation time to think about what they're going to do next i'm just trying to smoke them off rip but level three in there is fine because of the new change i agree thank you mm -mm. the goku would have been smarter i was in uh in attention okay well, you get to him the nimba a is causing some trouble right now Fuck. Funny friends. Wow, that worked. Holy shit. I think you hit him airborne. <laughs> Holy shit. No, 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 no. Okay, so here, here especially, like, it's okay for you to just spend the vanish and then end the combo with a level 3 as well. Like, soft knockdown playing from behind is really hard to deal with. It, it's really hard to deal with soft knockdown as one character against two. Um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of risky. I mean, it works here though, but I think he's alive still. I actually don't know. Yeah, he's alive. Takes his turn. Trying to take yours back. Just was slow on the draw. So here's where the game gets a lot harder because now he's able to rotate his characters. your legs because the lariat so yeah I'll, overall i would say first thing is that you respect him a little bit too much um in terms of like when he's playing neutral and you got so so hector when he plays this team he has to realize that his, his key blast zoning is naturally riskier because 
Uh, he's running a key blast assist. He's running Janemba A. So he can't do like key blast Janemba without risking getting super dash straight. <clears throat> so every once in a while, you do want to test him to, to make sure he has that reaction because you never know. You might just get a free hit. And even players that can react, like, I, like we can all react to it. But that doesn't mean that we will react every time. And there are differences in how easy or difficult it is to do for different situations. So don't don't remove the option from the table altogether just because you're afraid of getting too H'd. If you're afraid of getting too H'd, then that means you need to do Super Dash better, right? <clears throat> Obviously, YOLO full screen Super Dash is not that good, but if you're picking your spots and you're doing it in a spot that makes sense, then obviously the mechanic can be used a lot better. So I would think about that. I'll think about block string resources, right? Think about how to vary, how to vary your pressure whenever you do lock your opponent down, and think about how does my opponent want to defend in the situation. Pay attention to how is escaping strings. Are they jumping a lot? Are they pressing something like reflect? Do they tend to guard cancel? Do they like to press buttons, right? Or reversals, right? That all of that data drives how you choose to run your offense, right? You need to play off of your opponent in that regard. The moment I see that someone likes to hold up on block strings a lot, then guess what? I'm gonna start doing block strings specifically to catch jumps, right? Because those are free hits. And so they change their habits, right? And it's hard for people to break habits mid-game. So a lot of the time, it can result in multiple free hits. It's not just one. So you want to keep that in mind moving forward whenever you're choosing when you're choosing to run your offense. Health management needs to be better. Much, much, much better. Most of the time, um, you're you're leaving in your lowest health character, even after a combo or whatever, uh, which you know leaves them in a one-touch scenario, which is not what you want. There are so many ways in this game to rotate characters, tags, DHCs, all that stuff that you should always be thinking about. You you might be relieved because like maybe you finally got the hit that you were looking for. I know this happens to a lot of people. A lot of people are just relieved that, oh my god, I finally got the hit. Like, now nah, I just want to kill the character. That's all fine and dandy, but you also need to be future-proofing yourself because you never know when a scramble is going to happen in this game and characters can die very easily. So just because you you know you can kill with the point character with a level one, maybe you can kill with the back character, which does you know so serves multiple purposes. It, it not only kills the character, but it also positions yourself well for the situation afterwards. And setting up contingency plans in, the, in this way is really really important for the game, which is why whenever you watch high level play, you'll see them rotate. You'll see that if they have a character in on a pixel and they get the hit, they'll almost always DHC into a character that has more health to leave themselves more survivable for the situation afterwards. So, um, very, very important, right? And that, that's something you need to think about because that, that goes, that goes hand in hand with resource management, right? <clears throat> uh, and health management, which are two of the most important aspects of the game, resource management and health management. <clears throat> um, there was one more thing. There was one more thing. Oh yeah, um, more knockdowns, right? Um, if you get a hit with with someone, right, and 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 you have the choice of taking a soft knockdown or spending, you know, even if it's a bunch of extra meter, if you have to spend four extra bars to get a hard knockdown instead of a soft knockdown, I will tell you that nine times out of ten, it's gonna be worth it, right? It might seem like a lot of resources to burn, but the knockdown is so important to often uh, offense in this game, right? It, it is. Arguably the most important aspect is which type of knockdown do you take the 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 more resources you spend often The better knockdown you get which limits your opponent's options on defense even more And if you feel like sometimes you have trouble opening up someone like like Hector I can tell you you will open them up a lot more if you actually knock them down Right because now you're you're, you're forcing him to respond in a certain way right whereas with soft knockdown or even SKD right now you have to worry about what tech option are they gonna choose are they going to delay wake up for 21 frames and then wake up and press a button, right? You don't have to worry about that with hard knockdown. So anytime that you get the chance to take the hard knockdown, most of the time it's going to be the right decision. It's like almost never the wrong choice to level three your opponent for a, for a knockdown. Trust, like honestly, it's like almost never the wrong choice. So don't don't hesitate to spend spend the meter uh, or the resources to to, uh, to to do so to your opponent, right? Um, and the last thing, the last thing is, uh, so the same thing that I told Nep's, uh, the, the same thing that I told Nep's brother, or not Nep's, uh, Nocturne's brother, uh, is when you, when you play the game, you want to think about where on the screen do you want to be, right? So I'll use the whiteboard for this to explain the concept. So Hector's team, right, has a tracking assist in the form of Janemba. 
right? And he also is running uh, short range, short range assist in, in, uh, in the case of Majin, Majin Buu, right? So like, this is, the, this is like the zone that he covers with his assist. He can call the tracking assist to, to hit you anywhere, right? But the the faster of the assists, or the the, the 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 better property of the two assists, because the Majin Buu assist is you know beam property instead of key blast property, right? This this is what you need to worry about is this zone. Because this is where Majin Buu will hit you, right? Um and, and that, that is real lockdown. Like you have to hold a block string afterwards if he chooses to. Whereas you you are actually playing in similar ranges to him. It's actually one of those games where uh, thank you, Cool Kid. It's one of those games where like your 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 assist ranges are very similar. Like you're both playing uh you're both playing like relatively short range. And when I say short range, I mean they don't go full screen. Um short range, you know, mid-range assists, right? You're playing hit and you're playing base Goku, which will like hit. You know, base Goku's pretty large actually, so he hits like probably somewhere around here or something like that. So like the the issue is that you have kind of the same effective zone, right? Like off of round start, which makes this initial opening like very scrambly in a way because you're both you're you're both you both feel strong here, right? Both uh, all your assists, all the assists that you guys have will make contact from this range. So you all you both feel very confident, right? So it's really important. For you, <clears throat> because he is more likely to call his assist whenever you're at long range because he's playing tracking Janemba. So, for example, if you super jump back and he calls assist, he can like get some type of lockdown or something up here, right? How, which means that this assist, this Janemba assist, is going to be called more than probably any assist in the game, right? Overall, the Janemba assist is probably going to get called the most, which means you need to be looking for it the most because he's going to call it the most. It has the most range of any assist. On the screen so he's going to call it a lot especially in long range scenarios that being said that means when you are able to avoid the janemba assist right because he's spamming it because he should spam it because it's the long range assist uh -uh. when you get that to miss you're favored heavily because now you're playing two mid-range assists versus his one right and on top of that hit is involved so when you force a mid-range engagement to assist the one you're really favored like really really favored so you should be focusing on presenting that scenario to him and how can you do that by using your movement right there, there's not really a, a right answer for every single scenario but you know like i said moon jumping is easier now grounded movement is also really strong in general especially because if you're on the ground and he decides to call janemba you get to reflect on reaction even if you block the first part of it you can guard cancel reflect and not have to deal with the pressure right and now you force the mid-range scenario where both of your assists now work right and if he tries to take his turn back and you called hit, he just gets hit and eats a full combo. So you should think about like where you want to be on the screen, right? And bias your gameplay towards forcing that scenario, right? Because that is where your favor. The percentages are in your favor. If I said, if you go to this part of the screen, you have a 70% 70, 70 chance of hitting your opponent, a 70-30 chance, right? Wouldn't that feel like you want to be there much more than, you know, playing a situation where you're unfavored? I'd say, like, you're, you're probably, like, 60-40 like his favor uh, from the long range, right? So you want, to, you want to put yourself in these ranges and try to avoid these ones, if you can, right? Try to stay a little bit more grounded, like I said, because the reflect situation for Janemba is really important. Um, like, if he calls it and you're able to reflect, then you kind of mitigate a lot of stuff in general. But play your neutral like this. Think about where you need to position on the screen. What is going to work where, right? And of course, this changes whenever you have different characters on point as well, right? Because obviously, if either of you tags and Kefla is now in the back, now you have to deal with the long range assist, right? Both you have to deal with the full screen assist, which makes for, for his case, right? <clears throat> and, 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 and I would say his team in neutral is arguably stronger uh, whenever Majin Buu is on point. Why? Because Majin Buu has all the tools that Kefla does. He, he has the rapid key blasts that are just as fast. He has long range buttons like JH that like reach like full diagonals on the screen. J2H covers a lot of ground this way as well. But more important than that, the assist dynamic completely changes because now he can play the floor as lava by saying, I have Kefla assist, you must respect this because I have full screen lateral control. And then if you decide to jump it to avoid it, he has Jitnemba to lock you down 
in the air, right? So this is a much scarier situation and one that you want to try to avoid at all costs. And how do you do that? By being more effective in the point matchup because he's choosing to play play Kefla up uh, up front. So that means if you're able to win neutral and not Kefla down and and put her into a if I hit you, you're gonna die situation. You're gonna survive a lot more uh, in the in the neutral engagements overall for the game. So those are things that I would keep in mind moving forward. Hopefully that made that made sense. That was a lot, but <laughs> um, hopefully that concept like sticks well. And I think you'll you'll be much better off whenever you start implementing that. Mm -mm. Okay, I need to change song again. Um, let's do... Let's do this one. Hey, no problem, bro. Alright, this is the last set of the day for analysis. It's like going right according to the schedule too, so... Uh, add time... The Choco set, I see. How did, how did this end? What was the score? Does anyone know? Seven four, it looks like. Yeah, let's see the last three games then. Four three seven four. So you went up five four. Okay. Start at five three then. Okay. Cam. Okay. Oh, just super dashes you off the round start. Just expect shit like that from him. You definitely gotta be better at blocking standard stuff like that. that that's like unassisted, so like, yeah, you, you gotta, <laughs> got, gotta be better at blocking stuff like that at least. Cause those are, those are free hits. If you can't block stuff like that, it's literally a free hit every block string. Okay, nice tag. Drop the conversion though. Very nice that you didn't actually mash 2H here. You usually mash 2H whenever someone's above you in the corner. I like the reflect choice because um, Vegeta's, Vegeta's 2H is one that moves him forward. So it's very easy for the cursed super dash situation to happen. We've all seen this before where you go for a 2H on an airborne opponent and their super dash like kind of curves behind you like this because you move forward. Because when you move, when you, when you press 2H, now your character occupies the corner because they move forward. So and the game tells you that, okay, both of you cannot be in the corner. <laughs> so it lets you take the corner from them and then you miss your 2H altogether and then you get super dash in the back and then you complain when it could have been avoided. So very nice choice to reflect there instead. Hey, okay, restagger, gets hit. Uh, you should probably learn the re-jump combo there. Definitely worth doing. Uh, ooh, I don't like this though. So you do all of this, and this is fine, but where's my knockdown? G give me my knockdown. This is not what you want. Soft knockdown fucking sucks. Uh, so either burn the burn the meter on spin or something. Like, don't take the soft knockdown here. You already did the hard part, and you messed up the easy part. And now because because you soft knockdown, this situation happens, right? It, it's not irrelevant. Soft knockdown, which lets him up tech immediately, double jump, you whiff trying to meaty, 
I'll have him off of a soft knockdown. He does up tech key blast and gets a full a full hit here. Doesn't convert it into a combo, but you see how you lose all your pressure just because you chose to take a soft knockdown instead of an SKD. Choco's sparking offense sucks. Alright. Got counter hit there, trying to press. I definitely pulled the trigger a little early on this sparking. General rule of thumb is like if you're trying to spark like a zebra lead, because uh, what you're thinking is like you don't want to wait to block something because obviously like he could just command grab you, but you can you can tick react to to movement, right? The difficult thing about reacting to Broly command grab is that like it's really hard to react in a way that gets a punish, right? But pressing sparking and respond to movement while the character is near you is much easier to do because you're, you're responding to any type of movement and it doesn't actually matter which one he chooses, whether it's a button, a command grab, or whatever, right? The sparking's gonna work against all of them. So you can afford to wait a little bit longer to burn the resource. Okay. So, for what it's worth, sometimes, like, and you'll see that what, so, so, uh, you have the benefit of, of having me who plays SSJ Vegeta uh, relatively often, right? Um, so I would say, in, in a lot of situations, so you choose to, you choose to cash out, right, with the, the JS, but if you see me in the same situation, a lot of the time, uh, I will, I will not to the tooth the success ender and the reason is because it actually severely impacts the situation afterwards you'll see me just take a traditional air combo into a jh knockdown and the reason is because after the jh knockdown uh -oh, you're much closer to your opponent right you, you're, you're much closer to your opponent after the knockdown meaning that it's much easier to get your safe jump media afterwards here you level three i'm so high into the air and vegeta is forced to land right He's forced to land after his level three before he does anything. This is a special fall animation. You cannot do anything until you touch the ground and your opponent's already experiencing recovery because they land first. So by the time you get over there, Choco is already actionable, right? You see how far he gets up into the air. He could have done anything. He could have literally just pressed 2H or air to air command grab. And that's because you level three, I'm so high in the air. So sometimes it's worth it to not to take the less damage and meter on the knockdown, which wasn't really a problem because you were at seven bars anyway. Um, and just level three him on the ground so you can actually take off in time to midi. Otherwise, it can get kind of fucking awkward. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
Take a look at this again. Oh, double jump spent. You 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 gotta murder him for this. Uh one of two ways. Either stay on the ground in 2H, which is my preferred. You could go up there too. You could you could go up and air to air him because like he has no jump resources left. And that's why that's why he pressed super dash there, because he's like, fuck, I don't have anything left. Um This combo sucks. You're better off doing uh You're better off doing JS into uh into J2L, the dive kick, and then just extending and then you just kill him. With a pretty simple combo after all of this. I don't know why you chose to do this. Way more potential for it to drop. That worked out though. These are some ugly games. Mm -mm. Nice. I would probably guess reflect on wake up because he likely is not gonna want to take a block. So, so here, here is like knockdown philosophy, right? Um, I, me, I'm looking for reflect here because I'm assuming he doesn't want to take a block string into 50-50. Uh, and he also doesn't have meter to guard cancel, so I would probably be looking for reflect here above all. He up tech though, that's so stupid. Yeah, really, really dumb ph defensive philosophy from Choka there. Mm -mm. And also, you're whack for not confirming. Like, what is that? Brought on Broldy. Yeah. Yep. The power of reflecting the assist instead of. Does some people just take the assist on block? It's so weird. You're Bardock. You know you win clashes, right? If he six M's you, he's losing. He doesn't have a 6 frame, you do, and on top of that, you get grabbed mid reflect. Not while not during an active reflect. So like if you're if you're reflecting something, let's say you're like reflecting a beam, they can't grab you during it. You're completely invulnerable. Uh he could also just lariat you too, but like he doesn't even have to. He literally just press 5L. There's no reason for you to be scared of 6M. So this is, this is actually really fucking bad from Choco, like you shouldn't have done this, but you didn't punish him, so you, you, you sparking, if you press empty vanish immediately, you literally just punish this for him pressing into your activation. So just press it immediately next time, there's no reason not to. He can't, he can't hit you. He, he cannot, he cannot hit you if you press empty vanish immediately post sparking activation, because it's zero on block. So. That's the fucked up thing about sparking. Maybe he thought UI frame 4 after 6M. That's a layer 2 interaction. He has no reason to believe that that's what Choco's gonna do until they've actually played the situation multiple times and Choco has shown that he's gonna do it. Choco has just pressed 5L after every, after every 6M pretty much, so like... 
fucking take your turn until the, he shows you that he's gonna actually do something else. You have to wait to land on the ground to vanish. Yeah. You're still zero though. Still zero. I don't know if this reaches. Oh, it does. Holy shit. This might have been Broly only, honestly. This is really close. Like, I wouldn't say a smaller character that would have whiffed on. <laughs> Might want to be a little careful about that next time. <laughs> That's scary stuff. Oh, God. Okay. Wait, why did he press 2 here? Oh, you, okay. Still a weird place for Choco to press 2H. Like, that would have been a good place to call your assist too when you did that jump. Jump plus assist instead of just jumping. like tend to mash reflect after you get hit a lot like I don't yeah I... <laughs> some some shit going on right now Oh, I forgot. Twitch's player is garbage. I'm sorry, guys. I, w I wish Twitch would make it so I could skip by 5 seconds instead of 10. Annoying. Okay. Getting hit by IED double overhead quite a lot. Indecisiveness. So, here's the, here's the problem. Right? Here's the problem with this situation. So you force the situation by calling Vegeta, right? This commands respect. The problem is that your own Vegeta assist causes you to hesitate when there is no hesitation to be had, right? There's no reason. By this time, you should be able to tell that, okay, my assist is not making contact. So if I want to get, if I want to force my opponent to block or get the hit, I need to press something earlier. Why are you the one hesitating? They're the one that has to hesitate because it's your assist. The assist can't hit you. But you, re you should be able to re recognize that, okay, this shit whiffed, so I either am going to disengage or I'm going to press something to try to get the hit. You waited too long. You gave him too much time to think about the situation, right? You could tell that Choco sat there. Choco sat there for like, you know, a second or two and then was like, oh shit, he called a key blast. It's time to super dash, especially because it didn't make contact, right? See, see the delay between that time? Got to make your decision faster. I don't think I don't think either of you have done a proper midi. Eventually, you're, you're gonna run into someone. I, you've already run into someone. So, like, if I'm if I'm playing against you and your Bardock is on point and you don't have an assist, I'm literally looking for nothing else but gut punch so I get a free reflect punish every time. That's that's what I would do because you always you always eventually go for it whenever you're solo Bardock. Like, it always it always happens. So, um, yeah, pretty dangerous because like. It's a true punish on a lot of characters. A lot of pun a lot of characters get a free punish on reflect gut punch, so maybe I have to peel back the autopilot. I don't know what that was. 
Missed ID maybe. Still gotta learn some some other mix-ups aside from 6M men. Get a Cisco. I would probably swap characters, honestly. It, it, like even the little, even the smallest amount of blue life can have like really big impact for the game. So I, I probably would have brought in Vegeta. Okay, he just gets a hit for whatever reason. I don't, I'm so confused, bro. Like, it's, like what? The, what is he doing? Yeah, there's there's some shit going on. Okay though, that's why we're here. You gotta be better at recognizing whiffs from your opponent and actually punishing them for it. Right? Cause this this whiff, this is a punish. Right? You you press JL while holding back in case it does make contact. If it doesn't make contact like it did, you get a JL punish into a full combo. Mm -mm. Instead, you let him whiff in your face, and then land, and then match more. My man does not stop double jump super dashing. That's fucking crazy. He's unhinged. Interesting decision to, to air to air with JM there, but it works. Oh, you're about to get 3v1 Broly comeback though. I feel like that. Okay, every single time. I, bro, he has double jump super dashy every single time. You Just wait for it, bro. Just literally stand there. At, but at this point, you should realize that Choco is going to do everything in his power to not block. You, you have to be ready for the Yolos. <laughs> oh my god, bro. There's so many missed opportunities here. This is a really nasty scramble. Missed there. Not close enough for the gut punch. You missed there. Yeah, Bardock turned around because you ran too far. It's your fault. Not Bardock's fault. It's your fault. Look, you get you get the assist hit back here. You should know you have to stop. You ran too far. <laughs> Bardock didn't do shit, bro. He's innocent. If you're gonna do this... Don't jump first. What are you doing, bro? Why, why jump first? All, all the jumping first does is make it so you can be 2H'd. Like, that's literally it. Right? There's no other reason to, to jump first before you do <laughs> before you do the kick. So if you're gonna if you're gonna YOLO out, at least do it on the ground so you can't be 2 h So Broly can kinda do it either way, right? So you're just making it slower. The armor through. You're all, you're pressing yeah you you're 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 using the ex too much in general. I I've, I've given you this feedback before, where like you need to learn how to actually play neutral and not just default to pressing ex lariat on all your characters because you're I don't know you just don't know how to navigate the screen so you eventually always press some shit like this 
And it is the reason that Choco is able to get in on you is because you whiff this kick and you have a ton of recovery. So now Choco gets an IED for free. And yes, he doesn't get the hit, but he locks you down. And that's all Broly needs. He doesn't need anything else besides to lock you down. That was a punish. There's nothing to fear during the barrier activation. The fear is what comes afterwards, right? You, you get a good jump in here, dash jump, just keep going. Why'd you stop? The free punish. Oh, wow, that fucking worked. Holy shit. This looks mad far. Yeah, I don't know about that game. Tried to mash JH on the way down here, but it doesn't come out, so... Kinda look foolish. You're, you're just like, you're panicking. You're, you're like panicking really hard. Like really, really hard. Why is your response VP? Why not just two H the ID? Why is this set so ugly? The set is ugly because, put it bluntly, both of you guys have fucking terrible neutral. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. All right, let's talk about how we can fix this. Choco is a is a player that wants to scramble. That's like what he does. Choco just scrambles. He, he just wants to go in and scramble, right? So how do you mitigate this? <clears throat> you mitigate by Playing long range and forcing forcing Choco to make really big commitments in order to get in. And you see this, you see this a lot. You, you, you see this a, a lot. Like when Choco plays against players that are willing to lame him out, he has a really really hard time because he's trying to force his way in all the time, and you can't do that against people that that actually want to rely on their long range tools. Okay, what you're doing instead is you're like, well, Choco likes to scramble, so I'm gonna scramble with the scrambler. And when you scramble with the scrambler, you're gonna get scrambled. Yes? You're playing to his advantage. He he knows nothing but scrambling. So it is not in your benefit to play that game that game style against him. Right? If someone is very, very comfortable in a certain situation in the game, right? You should be doing everything in your power to avoid that situation, to force them out of their comfort zone. If someone is playing in their comfort zone, the, their autopilot becomes very strong. They're used to the situation. They don't have to react to anything. They just kind of go through the motions and things will work out, right? But if you force him to not scramble, right? And actually have to, to take calculated risks in order to get in and neutral and whatnot, you'll notice the game gets a lot harder because he's not used to playing that style. And we saw that, right? We're, we're, we we saw that. It, it, we would have saw it even more if you would have 2 h some of the double jump super dashes that happened because there were a lot, right? There were a lot of situations where you force, you, you, you position yourself underneath him whenever his double jump was burned, but you just never, that's the first step. The first step is positioning yourself underneath your opponent when they don't have double jump, right? The next step is answering what comes after, right? 
if you don't answer the part that comes after, he is not disincentivized to keep super dashing you, right? He's just gonna keep super dashing you because he sees that it's been working and you don't have the answer to it. But the moment you start 2-H'ing and shift for it, suddenly he's not able to do that anymore. And when he's not able to do that anymore, it's much easier for us to run our offense because now we can go up and jail him to the ground into a free mix anyway, right? Because he's so scared of super dashing that he just takes our block shit. Right, that, that that dynamic of the game is is the problem that you, that you're experiencing. You're you're not getting to the second part, right? You're not you're not doing things to answer your opponent's habits to force them out of their comfort zone. You're not forcing Choco to to have to play your game, right? That is that is the problem. That is that is the whole point of fighting games, right? Why do we talk about what's most important, right? The step one. What what is step one that I always talk about, right? The game plan, right? Always talk about establishing the game plan. Okay, you establish a game plan. The goal of the game is to make your opponent conform to your game plan. That is the that is what you're trying to do, right? It's like kind of imposing your will upon your opponent. That's fighting games, right? Force them to play on your terms. You're not doing that, right? You're 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 the conformist. You're playing you're you're playing into your opponent, right? And, and it is difficult, it's a difficult concept to, to wrap your head around because, you know, a lot of people will look at fighting games and they'll be like, well, I'm supposed to react to my opponent and like play based on them, right? That is true, right? But there's a difference between dropping, like, there's a difference between dropping to their level and ascending to me, right? So for example, right, if I play Choco, right, if I were to play Choco, I would never stoop to his level, ever. We're gonna play up here where I am, right? We're gonna play at my level. We're gonna play my game. So it's gonna make it really, really hard for him to, to survive because I, at no point in the game, no matter how much he mashes or scrambles or whatever, I'm not going down here, right? I'm not, I don't want the game to devolve. So I'm not going down there. I don't give a fuck what he does. I'm not going down there, right? Instead, I'm gonna focus on playing up here and forcing him to rise to the occasion. So, so that's the difference between, you know, the, 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 that's the difference between, you know, playing up to your opponent or playing down to your opponent, right? You will always want to play up to your opponent, but you don't necessarily want to play out, right? If you know you can play at up here, right? There's no reason to go down here. However, if I play against someone super strong, right? If I play like the Kill Sage or something, he's playing fucking all the way up in the stratosphere. I'm going to do my best to try to play up to his level, right? Because I know that his level is is good and respected, so I want to rise to the occasion. At no point do I want to drop, right? I don't want to. I don't want to devolve, right? I don't want to. I don't want to remove, you know, the things that I know that are good because my opponent is doing crazy shit. And that is that is the problem, right? That is the problem with a lot of people. Um, and, and and you know, you'll run into people all the time that that have a better time. They, they have a better time, you know, like, you know how many people that I know that would do better against literal top players of the game? There are people that I know that would play better against Goichi than like a green square online. Why? Because they're used to playing up. They're used to it, right? They're, they're used to having to rise to the occasion and play on a higher level than they might be used to to answer the situation, but they're really bad, right? They're really bad at playing down because playing down is fucking garbage. And it's garbage because when you play down, you you are you are forcing yourself to play the style that your opponent wants you to play, right? That's where scramblers, mashers, like all that stuff, all these blanket terms that, that get used for people, right? In a way, it's your own fault, right? In a way, it's your own fault because there are tools in the game that you have that can reduce the effectiveness of the things that they're choosing. However, if you never answer, right, the things that, that you're you're looking upon with scorn, <clears throat> they have no reason to stop, right? They have no reason to stop. If you prove that if they put you in if you put someone in the same situation a hundred times. And zero out of 100 times have you ever chosen the right answer to the situation, regardless of what your opponent chose, right? You're in the wrong, right? It's not your opponent's fault at that point. It's your fault. If if I, it, regardless of how, how frustrating it may be too, because right, I've, I have been in that position. I've been in that position of, I'm going to meet my opponent 100 times, right? 
And on the 101st, you'd think they not they wouldn't match, but they do, right? It's my own fault. I assumed that they would adjust, but they didn't. They have not ever shown that they would adjust. So what reason is there for me to believe that they will, right? There's no reason for me to assume that they will adjust when they have not shown me that the entire set. Just like there's no reason for Choco to stop double jump super dashing you when you have proven that you never have the right answer, right? So that is why answering these things is very, very important. Not for just the, the, the very tunnel vision aspect of we're playing a situation and I need to win out on the situation, right? But for the overall impact of the game and in long sets, this matters, right? Especially in long sets, because that's where the most adaptation comes through. Jazz Panther with the gift stuff. Thank you, bro. In a long set, if you never force your opponent out of their comfort zone, it is very difficult for you to win. It's extremely, extremely hard to win, right? Because you have never done anything to force them out of their game plan, right? You're never challenging their game plan. So this is something that you need, to, you need to work on. You need to work on first realizing, right? The first step is realizing what type of opponent are you up against. When I go, when I am on the 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 loading screen that shows both uh, both players' teams, you know, I think about two things, right? One, where do I need to be on the screen against my opponent's assists, right? That's the first thing I think about. The second is, who am I playing against? What type of player do I think they are? Are they going to try to scramble with me? Are they going to try to, you know, lay me out? What, what type of player? What type of player are they? Uh, Horatio with the 23 months. Hey, welcome back, bro. But do you see what I mean? Do you see how important it is? It's very important for you to establish that, that thought process beforehand. Because it makes it a lot easier for you to make adjustments as the set goes on. If you go into it close-minded and, and maybe just looking to autopilot and just do the same thing no matter who no matter who you're up against, then it's going to be really difficult for you to win. So this is this is the concept that I want you to meditate on for today. Um, because the little other stuff is not as important in my eyes, right? The the stuff about, you know, doing doing the right combos and rotating characters, like you've heard me preach to people about, you know, resource management and, and doing the right routes and all that. You've heard me talk about that 180 times. What you haven't heard me talk about is this, this, this very concept of, of not stooping to your opponent's level right and and that is not and and people watching youtube might be like you know if, if choco if choco is so 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 much lower than why did you win the set it, it's not it's not really about the level of player it's more it's more so about like the game plan right it's more it's more so about the game plan and how it manifests itself there are people that are extremely strong right there are people that are extremely strong that you could still play down to right like when I play double L, double L is a better player than me, right? However, if I play down to double L, I will lose, right? The, the best thing that I could possibly do about double L is to force him to play my game, not vice versa. That makes sense? So it's not a strictly skill level. It's not it's not a skill level thing, right? It's a, it's a mentality thing. These things are really important. You, you, you have to find a way, right? You don't know your own game plan. You know what you want from your. You don't know what you want for your characters in your game. You just kind of play. Well, yeah, that. I mean, that's clear, right? You're you're clearly autopiloting, right? But that very that autopilot is why you're experiencing what you're experiencing, right? Like you, it, improvement improvement is a is a series of plateaus, right? Fighting games are a series of plateaus. It's learn something new, experience short bursts of improvement into flatline right this complete flatline where you might be lost and you don't know what to do you don't know where to go from here right it's 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 that over and over and over again that's that's everyone right now the the amount of time it takes to break those plateaus changes from players to player but i can tell you the number one thing that that affects how long you stay within the plateau is mentality mentality and game plan go hand in hand you need to sit down and think about how do you want to play the game? How how does Link want to play the game, right? Ask yourself that. Once you establish that, right? Ev like almost everything in the game, almost everything in the game becomes much easier, right? I'm gonna use myself as an example. When I first picked up this game, I said, how do I want to play? Established, okay, I want to play neutral control. I want to be a neutral bully, 
right? I want to make it really difficult for my opponent to get in. From that game plan, Matt Shark with the gift, thank you, Merp. Um, from that game plan, I was able to establish a lot of things. I established what players I'm good against, right? What style of players I'm good against, what style of players I'm bad against, what characters are good for me, right? What characters do I have a hard time against? All of that goes hand in hand from that establishment of the game plan. What do I want to play the game like, right? And then I structure everything else in the game around that ideal. That is what makes a cohesive player. That's what makes a strong player, right? So eventually at some point, you're gonna have to ask yourself these things. What do I want to do in the game? How do I get there in the best way possible, right? It might, might turn out, maybe you wanna play a completely different style than you've been playing. Maybe you wanna play a different team than you've been playing. I don't know. Only you can answer that for yourself, right? But the worst thing that you can do to yourself is continue to go through the motions and autopilot, right? If you keep going through the motions, you're gonna find that shit just gets harder and harder, right? It gets harder and harder because people around you are improving and you know this. People around you are improving, so you're gonna get left behind if you do not figure this out. Because there's plenty of people, right, that once they establish that 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 fundamental game plan, the improvement they experience is like almost astronomical, right? Like it's it's pretty crazy. Like what can fall into place once you once you actually find that focal point of your game plan. So I want you to focus on that. And it might take you some time. Like it, it almost assuredly will take you some time. But when you play the game, focus on what you enjoy doing, right? What 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 does it feel good to do and what does it not feel good to do, right? Where do you feel like you're advantaged and disadvantaged? And use those thoughts to formulate a game plan. And then once you formulate a game plan, the next step is refining the game plan. It's not as simple as, oh, I'm a, a, a my, my game plan is not as simple as, oh, I'm a neutral bully, so I just beat everyone in neutral, right? So now that I picked my game plan, thank you for the gift sub, Patrick. Appreciate you. Uh, now that I picked the game plan, I focus on how to implement that game plan. If I want a neutral bully, what moves do I need to be using? And what ranges to do though do that right and it's just refinement over and over again and the refinement never stops it never stops right hidden has not stopped refining his game plan no one has because you know why because nobody's perfect there's no such thing as a perfect player so there's always room to improve so we continually refine our game plan so that it works against more and more people that's more airtight right so that we have a baseline of what we're going to do when we play a game of Dragon Ball Fighters, and we force our opponent to answer the game plan first before making adaptations, right? They're forced to be like, okay, my opponent is doing this, but now I need to adapt to it. That's what we want, because when they have to adapt, like I said, it's out of their comfort zone, right? We're forcing them off of what they do by default. Super, super important. Think on that. And next time you, next time you submit, right? And I don't care how long it takes you, because you know I'll be here, right? Next time you submit, we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you, Link, what is your game plan? Right? And it doesn't have to be the most thought out. Like, I, I'm a complicated ass person. If you ask me what my game plan is, I could go on for on. I could go on for days, bro. I could go on for days talking about my game plan, right? It doesn't have to be that complicated. But when I ask you, when I ask you, Link, what is your game plan? I need an answer, right? Regardless of, uh, of, of what that answer is, I, I just need you to, to be able to tell me. I need you to tell me what's your game plan. How do you like to play the game? Because until you establish that for yourself, there's only so much I can do, right? There's only so much I can do for you when you yourself do not know how you want to play the game, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Good stuff. Thank you guys for the, the gift subs. I appreciate you. Oh, we're at level 2 hype chain. But I do only analysis. No, I do analysis for Strive on Thursdays. Um, okay. Does anyone have the link to the, the Wawa Kaiden set? Does anyone know where that was played? Because I have not watched that yet. Also, this is the end of the analysis session for the YouTube people. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we do this every week for subs. Every week we do this for subs. Um, so if you're interested in getting a session like this, come to the stream and subscribe. Helps me out a lot and uh, helps me help you. Thank you.